Kansa Rulon Tongan shares the inspiration and vision she finds in her cultural history and the urgency of contemporary issues. Ron Tongan, choreographer, dancer, director, uh, many things, but uh, most importantly, an artist. Why dance to tell your story? Why dance to change the world? I think there's a theme about transformation, like finding broken things or lost things or old things and turning them into something um, beautiful, I think, was my initial inspiration. It's almost in response to maybe being in uh, environments of of challenge and of chaos and looking for how to, how to create beauty there. And at a certain point in my life, um, the make, like I, I still love making things, but there was a point at which I wanted to be inside of it, to embody it. So what makes you tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that continue to use this as your, your mechanism to not just change the world, but change us mm. and the people around you? About 10 years ago, I had a huge health struggle, a huge um, kind of life or death battle. And I actually lost the ability to be in, to, I lost my whole entire physicality. At that time, I had a lot of um, visions and dreamings. So I had a way of seeing the world, um, a way of understanding the world that I wanted to translate into life. And because I was in such a um, diminished physical form at that time, I had to translate it onto other bodies, and that's actually choreography. Water needs to be impounded in huge quantities and moved to where a power plant's going to be located. And as women, we are carriers of water in our bodies when we carry life. Our indigenous world is so storied. Everything is symbolic, and I'm, I'm very attracted to that in, in many different cultural forms. Um, so symbolism, archetype, and um, just the fact that everything has a story. And to be able to express those stories in a non-linear, non-narrative fashion. So go to the essence of the story and become it. What I have is, is not for, to serve myself and my ego, but it's to serve to strengthen communities by um, remembering, reviving, reinterpreting these stories, um, making them uh, available to people to experience. So that theme of transformation that I spoke about mm -hmm. um, can also take the form of renewal. It's not that it transforms, like in, as a dancer, you can, tra I love that in dance, you can, you can become a snowstorm, you can become an, an ancient ancestor, you can become so many different things, you're not limited. It's interpretive and dance is a, is a language in and of itself. Absolutely. You do uh, a, a good bit of work about dance and the environment. Mm -hmm. What's the conversation there? What's the, the dialogue there? I look at it and I'm like, okay, well, what is the role of dance in our society? What is the purpose? What has it been in ancient societies? And my understanding is that it's for functional ritual. What is it that we have the duty to, to speak about, to create messages around, so that there's a purpose for it? I think the, you know, the issues of, of the time that are most resonant with me are about our environment. I think, you know, possibly also because of the illness that I faced as a you know, fairly young woman, that there might be reasons in the environment that are causing um, a lot of illnesses for a lot of people, different levels of illnesses. And um, so this idea of uh, healing at personal, social, community and environmental transformation is an impetus to my work. You spoke in the earlier uh, question about dreams. Mm. I, I like that. And I want to connect that, the, the visual of mm. dreams and, and creation, especially, to the mythology that mm. is often cited in your work. Mm. Um, can you talk a little bit about that cultural connection mm -hmm. to the mythology in your work? Sure. There's some great quotes um, that I can't quite remember, but for instance, Joseph Campbell, um, who cited that the history and philosophies of other people are mythology. Right. I totally resonate with that in that I think of mythology more as history mm -hmm. and that every culture has it 
and sometimes, oh, that culture, you know, you're sort of like, oh, that looks like such beautiful mythology. But, um, for example, in um, many of our Native American stories, there's core information about our world, for example, about um, uh, uh, coming, from, coming down from the stars, for example, in some stories. Um, and now, science and DNA catches up, and they are able to say, oh, you know, all of um, life on Earth, all of matter, comes from carbon, which is from the heart of dying stars. I'm like, yeah, there's, there's stories about that. I mean, that's certainly what inspires me as well to sort of take these um, stories and translate them into movement so that these really important information about how to live on Earth can be sustained and renewed. Water is meaningful to me. Water is my life and my family. And you've been able to bring the philosophy of your work to some of the things that you've done for film, like Apocalypto yeah. and New World. You spoke a little bit about the, the colonization of the body yeah. and in that experience. So could you briefly share a little bit of that with us? Well, that sort of brings us to uh, the brief history of indigenous uh, contemporary theater and dance. So um, the, this there's a few people who have been pioneering this, maybe say the 60s or 70s, around the time of the AIM movement um, and uh, like civil rights era. And basically, um, there's threads that I connect with through some of the, those innovators. Um, for example, uh, in Canada at around that time, the great playwright Thompson Highway, his dancer brother Rene Highway, who ended up being collaborators with Raul Trujillo and Alejandro Monseria, these are all people whose work, I, you know, I, I know them, they're mentors. And the premise that they had and that I had separately was how can we look at theater and dance and create from an indigenous place which um, is decolonized in the sense that we do not have to bring in western theater conventions unless we choose to mm -hmm. if we want to be in a four square space with red lighting we can and we can also question how can we indigenize these elements based on like i didn't know i didn't know until fairly recently like 10 years ago i thought that um, native theater had not existed in theater form. And then I was educated on that, like, oh, actually in the Northwest they had long houses with long tubes of uh, lo logs with fire going through that created very sophisticated lighting for operas that lasted maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe the entire winter. So I look at decolonizing the theater practice and also decolonizing the body. I think there's a lot that society has told us about bodies that is not appropriate. With Dancing Earth, what I really love is the idea of dance being an education and, uh, and a liberation. Mm. And, uh, and I thank you for being part of that, Roland. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being here with us today. Thank you.